Fallout 76, we're doing a basic sort of camp guide, uh, just kind of going over the details about the new sort of replacement for settlements, as to say, from Fallout 4. If you've played Fallout 4, uh, it's basically very much the same sort of experience and setup, but if you're new to the game, uh, this is going to be something that could be a little bit overwhelming. So you're unlocking this as you're playing, it's part of the progression in sort of the main story that you kind of work through. You'll eventually get to a point, assuming you are doing the missions, where you get uh, access to camps, and it kind of tells you how to set them up. So first off, we have a camp, we have this right here. So this is my camp. I can build, I can transfer, I can repair structures, because you will get attacked by various creatures, so you actually do need to create a defense. And we're just going to knock off all the key points of actually getting your settlement going. So it should be noted, when you open up your Pip-Boy, you can move your camp with the LB button. That's right, it does cost you know, caps to actually do that. And we have the build option too. Pretty excited, right? So we've got this cool little menu. You can see your recent items. You can see at the top all of the different kind of areas and sections you can build. You can see your budget on the top right there. So you do have a limit to how much you can actually create. And that has to do with, I guess, performance and whatever else with the game and how much it can handle and you're seeing below the budget a sort of outline for how, what this actual power pylon contains when we want to go to actually build it what it uses cool so that's that uh, then you can click B to switch to modify and this is a segment where you can actually move things so you can actually pick up your camp and move it elsewhere if you'd like we're just gonna drop it because it's in a fine spot for now and I really don't care cool so that's the basics of that aspect, moving everything like that, because you will be occasionally moving at the spots. Keep in mind that you can only place it sort of outside of structures, so it actually becomes uh, sort of really annoying in the sense that I've, found a I've had a very hard time placing it in places, so you really have to sort of uh, find a spot that's a little bit out of the way. Somehow this works, I don't get it, I'm taking it, and I'm doing it. So there we go, that's my camp, you see it on the map, pretty cool. I believe the starting sort of area for camps is around here. You'll kind of learn where it is up in the, the airport section of Morgantown. Cool, so there's that. And you can hold um, the back button. I guess it's start and back, whatever it's called these days, windows and window, whatever they call it. And you can actually jump right into build if you're in the vicinity of your camp. Again, pressing B to switch to modify. Cool, so we have an item. When we're actually focused on a, an item, it will be highlighted in green, and we can modify it. So we click A, and then we're able to move it, and you'll see a phantom outline of where it actually is already existing. And then we can rotate it left or right, and we can place it or cancel what we're doing. We're just going to place it right beside where it was, because we really don't care too much. Cool. So a lot of the game is based around actually finding resources. So I've noticed uh, when I pack everything up, I kind of have to like replace things, but you'll notice uh, stuff gets kind of bundled together. And I don't know if this is a glitch or if it's going to keep going. That's just how it was for me when I've been moving it. Is this like core building you've, I see, you know, you see right here, the wood and everything like that and all the items within it came as a sort of bundle that I can just throw on the ground again quickly to build and then there was a couple items that came as uh, standalones like I don't remember having a second stash box so it seems to have duplicated that for some reason but we can just place it down I, I really don't care next we have uh, sort of our floors lots of different options again they're gonna probably add more over time and everything like that uh, you'll notice the game does have a snap feature for easier building and to make things look concise and clean because god it can be so annoying when stuff is uneven looking at you old halo forge engines <laughs> yeah and then we have a bunch of walls again that whole snap option that is present bunch of different things to build and again it's easy to understand uh, what you need resource wise and you'll need to find a lot of plans in order to build stuff so it's going to be tedious questing and missions and building and doing stuff to unlock things and then we've got roofs if we want roofs to have over top of our heads i can't really do that on this because i've created a bit of like a, a metal bar sort of frame using like a special stair thing i see that yeah 
And then there's a lot of like intersection rules too. You can't have stuff intersect in certain ways. But you see how it does sort of uh, snap if the highlight on the green will do this again. There we go. And it's just easy snapping, easy doing. The building is so intuitive in this game, it's unreal. And then we've got doors. If you want to put doors down, pretty fancy, I know, right? And then there's crafting options, so we can build uh, cooking stations, workbenches for weapons, and stuff like that. It kind of seems like a bit of a downgrade in terms of what's available, if that makes sense for Fallout 4. Because there was like this whole settler's roots and everything you could do, but I guess if there's like no NPCs, you can't really do that. A bit sad, because it's actually a cool way to make coin and stuff. Anyways, uh, we're going to have tra or traps. Basically, you need defenses, because you're going to get attacked by things. Like... Every time I come back here, there's damn Scorched attacking my base. It is annoying, it doesn't make any sense, and it's just like, let me live my life. <laughs> but I guess it also gives you a sense of purpose? I don't know. So you don't really need any, like, power to kind of run these things. They produce a certain level of defense when you have them. Some of them require different perks, but you can kind of get an idea of the different sort of weapons you can place out. That one is probably damn epic, this fire thing. But you get the idea of it like spikes and they'll provide so much damage and do so much damage to enemies as they're coming. I suggest maybe putting like a barricade around uh, the turrets and kind of have them shooting. I, I used to have them very strategically, strategically placed in Fallout 4 and that was very helpful to defending my base. I did pretty good. So this is kind of what I mean by barricades. There's actually like proper ones like this and you place them down and you got like a bit of a defense. You know, neat stuff like this. You get a, a wide selection of different defense objects and you can have like cool artillery too. And some objects require power as well, which is what we're going to get into right now. So you see this has a power requirement. There are a few different generators you can put down. I go into this more in my sort of uh, full electricity guide video. I go in depth on that one. But you basically build generators. You can string generators together so I can place this and then I can have a wire going between them and connecting them and sort of combining their power. You actually have to build wires. So you go up to it and you press Y and you attach a wire and then you place it on this and then that'll emit energy to your various items. So we're just gonna go back to build. A couple different tiers. I suggest the large generators. Unless you can get a fusion generator because you're all fancy. Uh, these ones really don't give you a lot and they kind of take up a lot of space. I don't suggest using them. Unless you're going for some weird Mad Max style look. Then we got power connectors. So that's what you're seeing right here. Different things you can string power to and keep the circuit going and, you know, stuff like that. These are pretty cool too. I definitely find the switches to be uh, very helpful once you get to that point. Son of a. This game is so obnoxious at times. Sorry, I had to go kill those guys. I'm trying to do something and keep getting harassed by these in-game characters. It's, it's not enough that I don't run into them 24-7. Good way to show off the destruction. So things get broken because these things come around constantly. So you go to it and you'll see that it's broken. It's got yellow around it. You press A and then you're able to repair and it does have a cost. And then your item is repaired. Cool. So going back to that, uh, you get a surrounding area for your power, and then there are a variety of different lights that you can create. Uh, that should be noticed that the campfire does not require the typical sort of items to do. You can do oil and wood and gives it off its own light. But there's lots of cool things, there's different signs, and yeah, I, I definitely suggest construction lights if you can get them, because they're pretty good for their size and what they do. To recap, generator, wire to conductor, conductor puts out electricity and you can turn your light things on and off pretty easy right then we got food so food you need to have the food and you usually have to have fertilizer and you have to find um, kind of the uh, uh, the blueprints for it and then you place your food and then your food generates food every so often so my tree is not ready to pick because I already grabbed food from it that is slow 17 an hour jeez oh no oh that's not too bad 17 an hour and then you're able to actually go up to it and you can like press A to pick it when it allows it. You'll see that there's visibly like fruit and food on it and then you're able to do that. So farming, pretty easy. Uh, I thought there'd be more complexity to it but I know, pretty simple going. I suggest creating like a sort of area where your food is and covering it around with barricades to protect it but whatever. 
then there's water pumps and you place this in dirt and you get water there's lots of different water options if you're near a water camp area i guess doesn't make as much sense as it did during the settlements in fallout 4. then we've got resources uh, fertilizer obviously if you need fertilizer <laughs> fertilizer producer and then there's appliances you know things like ice coolers really more like decorative items you know nothing you need then there's beds i always suggest placing at least like just a basic sleeping bag down you know so you have an option for sleeping and hospital bed and then bunk bed again it feels very light in terms of content and we don't really have the mod support we did last time to expand it whatever so there's chairs and you can sit in them nothing too fancy i'm not going to go over that uh, stash boxes so these ones you can kind of uh, build and you can throw your crap in it stuff like that i uh, see the example with the two items i have different things you can stash stuff in you can have like safes and more secure ways of holding things or just silly stuff too you have like a dresser with clothing then there's floor decor you can have all kinds of weird stuff like a big statue or this is actually would be pretty awesome to have <gasps> the lawn flamingos i think i had those back in the day giant statues for your vault people and keep in mind you can also go into the atom store and there's items there too that can be purchased with in-game or real currency we got shelves Put crap on them. Tables. Want to sit at a table. Whatever. Wall decor. You can have like paintings and stuff like that. And yeah, whatever you'd like. And then we got miscellaneous other structures such as like actual tents for a more camping experience. And uh, yeah, that's kind of that aspect of it. So I definitely suggest, you know, getting that defense going unlocking more content building a bit of an actual housing structure and then around that housing structure actually placing things that are important to defend it such as little barricades and traps that actually keep people out and then having like turrets and stuff at maybe elevated positions to shoot uh, electricity is pretty easy going you don't need electricity but you know you can have it if you want some items require it and then yeah just grab a lot of crap that you find in the wasteland throw it in your stash box and then you're able to kind of you know take it from any stash box and you got all your supplies and you can use whatever you collected that's junk just throw all your junk in there and then you're able to uh, make cool stuff out of that junk and build a neat thing so if you have any questions about sort of building in the wasteland let me know i think i covered it quite well there's a variety of things you can build and i'm sure they're going to add more over time it really is the basics right now and you can do all kinds of you know neat things you can sit you can chill with your buddies and enjoy uh, the camp you do have a certain specific area for your camp again you got to build it a little bit out of the way you know you can't put it like right beside a structure like that hospital over there and there's a variety of different buildings that have different stuff it's pretty easy to find supplies uh, some supply places even have uh, like general supplies you can collect like wood and it really is about learning what sort of buildings put out what sort of stuff and then having a camp nearby and then grabbing stuff and then going back to your camp and you can fast travel to your camp too if you didn't notice that uh, I kind of well I guess I maybe cut that out you can actually respawn at your camp too if you'd like sorry I can try to get the map up it's so delayed in this and you'll see your camp icon pretty cool right I think that was easy going. Explained everything pretty well. Uh, there's a lot of things to build. Again, check out that Atom Store, but they'll add new content. I don't think we're getting mods on the console for this version. Uh, Fallout 4 has expanded greatly because of the mods in terms of building stuff. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with it. And yeah, it's kind of like an early access game almost. And I'm assuming they're going to add more stuff over time, hopefully, to make even more things. Because this is one of my favorite parts of the game. And uh, it took a little bit longer than I would have liked to get to because I do enjoy it so much.